بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم my dear students السلام علیکم there is your mathematics teacher محمد عبد السعید from Pakistan International School Tax of the Arabia today we will continue our lecture number 94 exercise 12.8 uh, first year class now we have question number 8 and I will choose one of these parts question number 8 Prove that part number one is delta is equal to r square cotangent alpha by two cotangent beta by two cotangent gamma by two. You can have right hand side. cotangent alpha by 2 cotangent beta by 2 cotangent gamma by 2 r square then we have what about cotangent alpha by 2 actually this is tangent alpha by 2 reciprocal of that is cotangent alpha by 2 so in case of cotangent alpha by 2 you will write down s into s minus a over s minus b s minus c under root After that, s into s minus b, s minus a, s minus c. Then third one is s into s minus c, s minus a, s minus b. So, dear students, you know that r square, r is delta over s. So you can write down delta square over s square. And now you can write down all the terms in single radical sign because they are multiplied. You can join them. S is coming three times. S minus a, S minus b, S minus c divided by S minus a square, S minus b square, and S minus c square. You have delta square over s square. Take one s from this double from inside. Here you can have s into s minus a, s minus b, s minus c, and all the terms in the denominator are squared terms. So they will come out as a single value. S minus a, S minus b, S minus c. This one S is cancelled with this one S. So, dear students, you can have delta square, and this is delta. S into S minus a, S minus b, S minus c in radical sign. This is delta. But s into s minus a s minus b s minus c, they are out of the radical sign, so it will be delta square. So they are cancelled out. We have delta, which was your left hand side. Here it is, left hand side. So dear students, that was your question number eight, part one. After that, we will have one more part. Because this question has three parts. Now I'm choosing the last part of your question number eight. That is number three. This is delta is equal to four r r for capital R small r cos alpha by two cos beta by two. And cos gamma by two. You can take your right hand side. Four r r cos alpha by two, cos beta by two, and cos gamma by two. Four into what about the value of capital R? 
दिस इज द फार्मूला ए बी सी ओवर फोर डेल्टा एंड वैल्यू ऑफ आर इज डेल्टा ओवर एस कॉज एल्फा बाई टू एस एस इंटू एस माइनस ए ओवर एस माइनस बी और अदर दिस इज एस ओवर एस माइनस ए बी सी एंडर रूट यस कॉज एल्फा बाई टू इज एस इंटू एस माइनस ए ओवर बी सी एंडर सिमिलरली एस इंटू एस माइनस बी ओवर ए सी एंडर रूट कॉज गैम बाई टू एस इंटू एस माइनस सी Over a b in the root. Uh, this four four cancelled out and delta delta cancelled out. We are left with a b c over s. Now you can write down all terms in single radical sign one two three. S is coming three times. S minus a, s minus b, s minus c divided by Remember that a and a is coming twice in the radical sign. You can take out a single. Similarly, b and c also. Now a b c is cancelled with this a b c. Out of these two s, you will take one s come outside the radical sign, and inside you have s into s minus a. S minus B, S minus C, whole divided by S. S S cancelled out, and this is delta, which is your left hand side. I hope that you understood this question. Dear students, after that we have question number nine. There are two parts, and I am choosing part number one. Taking right hand side, one over a b, one over b c, one over c. You can take LCM as a b c. Here is a b c. Dividing this LCM by a b, we have c plus a plus b. You can see that this is a plus b plus c, a plus b plus c over a b c. A plus b plus c is two s over a b c. Multiplying. The denominator by four. This is four delta and a b c over four delta. Actually. I want to make this capital R, which is A B C over four delta. So A B C was there. So multiplying and dividing the denominator by four delta. So we will have two S over. 
टू एस ओवर फोर डेल्टा एंड दैट इज कैपिटल आर ए बी सी ओवर फोर डेल्टा इज कैपिटल आर क्लियर नाउ टू वन टू 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 द फोर डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन राइट डाउन वन ओवर टू Bring this S to the denominator of delta. Bring this S to the denominator of delta. It will become reciprocal, and you will get the same. But in case of delta over S, that is delta over S equal to R. Uh, I wanted to make some all R here. So that's why we can write down small r in capital R. One over delta over s is smaller than capital R. This is your left hand side. So, dear students, that was your question number nine. After that, we have question number ten. minus c whole square 
this will be s minus c whole square divided by s into s minus c c c cancelled out one power of s minus c cancelled out dear students you can check in the numerator what is missing s minus a s minus b s minus c you have s is missing so multiplying above and below by s we will get s into s minus a s minus b s minus c over s into s in denominator you have s already so it is s into s minus a s minus b s minus c whole integral and s is double in square root sign it will come as single so in numerator this is delta i told you r was equal to delta over s so we have delta over s which is equal to r that is your left hand side i hope that you got the idea Are you students? After that, we have question number eleven. We have question number eleven. It's not so difficult, actually. you have to apply the different formulas and what is your target you also have the sum of the formulas of that one question number 11 prove that a b c into sin alpha plus sin beta plus sin gamma is equal to 4 delta s dear students uh, we had written the formula in the very beginning of your this part of these uh, formulas that was capital r is equal to what was the formula you can check from the yes you can check from the page yes Yes, 
students you have a b c into 2s over 2r a plus b plus c was equal to 2s here you can have
minus b as it is s into s minus c multiplying above and to below above and below by s into s minus c so this is delta you can have lcm s minus a s minus b so s minus b plus s minus a here is delta divided by actually s into s minus a s minus b s minus c under root is delta and denominator is double inside the radical sign so you can write down as it is s into s minus c but one time outside the radical sign dear students this is delta and this is delta delta square into 2s minus a minus b s plus s is 2s minus a minus b delta into delta delta square and in the denominator this is s into s minus a s minus b s minus c so delta square into 2s what is missing in the sense of sides a and b are given so we have to write down minus c plus c that will be and denominator is delta square dear students we have subtracted c and added c here delta square delta square cancelled out 2s minus common a plus b plus c and plus c here is you have taken common from these three terms dear students what is a plus b plus c that is 2s plus c they are cancelled out we are left with c that's your right hand side Dear students, that was your question number twelve. Is first part, and we can have our chapter number thirteen. We can start now chapter number thirteen. Uh, dear students, uh, before we start our exercise. Chapter number thirteen, thirteen point one. You have to take care of the page number three ninety five very carefully, because on page three ninety five we have different inverse trigonometric functions, their domains and range. Simply, you can understand in case of sine function. You have domain and range. In case of sine function, the domain was minus pi by two and pi by two, and range was minus one to one. But in case of inverse function, domain and range are interchanged. So you can say the y is equal to sine x. Its domain was. Minus pi by two, pi by two, and range was that one x is in between minus pi by two and pi by two, and range was y is in between minus one and one. In case of inverse function sine inverse x, domain and ranges are interchanged. This is the concept behind. inverse function these are important for your mcqs in your exam uh definitely these are important things and even it will be important uh for you to understand the inverse of function and inverse of domain and range In exercise chapter number thirteen, we have 
two exercises, 13.1 and 2, not so difficult. Again, we have the formulas in 13.2. Dear students, we have exercise 13.1 Evaluate without using table calculator Chapter number 13 This is your second last chapter of your whole book Exercise 13.1 We have to find If we have to find the values of part number 3 is cos inverse 3 under root over 2. This is cos inverse 3 under root over 2. Dear students, we have let y is equal to cos inverse 3 under root over 2. Here is bring this cos. This will be cos y is equal to 3 under root over 2. So your cos y 3 under root over 2, this is in the range of 0 and pi. So after that we have y is equal to, you can check y is equal to cos inverse 3 under root over 2 is pi by 6 pi by 6 mean 30 degree so dear students here we can have pi by 6 and this one also because this is the possibility pi by 6 and pi by 6 and cos negative is again cos positive you know that cos minus theta is equal to cos theta so both values will be same so in this way you can have the value of cos inverse 3 under root over 2 Dear students, after that we have tangent inverse minus 1 over 3 under root. This is part number 4. Tangent inverse minus 1 over 3 under root. Tangent inverse minus 1 over 3 under root. Then let y is equal to tangent inverse minus 1 over 3 under root. Bring this tangent to the left hand side. Tangent y is minus 1 over 3 under root. So dear students, tangent is negative. And minus 1 over 3 and the root is basically inside the range of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Yes, we have minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So what will be that? y is equal to negative this is 30 degree in fact and we have yes this is minus pi by 6 that is 30 degree pi by 6 this is pi by 6 this is minus 30 degree and you can check where is minus 30 degree this is located there 
This is pi minus pi by 6. Pi minus pi by 6. This is minus pi by 6 and this one is pi minus pi by 6. So this is the range of this value. So y is equal to minus pi by 6. After that, we have cotangent minus 1. Cotangent minus 1 is, we have part number uh, 7. For example, we have part number 7. Cotangent inverse minus 1. Yes. Let y is equal to cotangent inverse minus 1 and cotangent y is equal to minus 1. Cotangent is minus 1. Where you will get this cotangent minus 1? Actually, it will be minus pi by 4. implies that y is equal to minus pi by 4. If this is minus pi by 4 here, that will be pi minus pi by 4 and here is minus pi by 4. This angle is taken from the positive side and this is from the negative side. So in this way, we can have this answer. After that, we will have part number uh, 9 sin inverse minus 1 over 2 sin inverse minus 1 over 2 under root yes minus 1 over 2 under root first of all you will take let y is equal to sin inverse minus 1 over 2 under root bring this sign to the left hand side sin y is equal to minus 1 over 2 implies that y is equal to what is the value of sin y minus 1 over 2 under root actually this minus 1 over 2 under root is minus pi by 4 here we have minus pi by 4 like that exactly the same one minus pi by 4 so y is equal to sin inverse minus 1 over 2 under root is equal to minus pi by 4. That was your answer. Dear students, uh, that was your exercise 13.1, question number 1. I hope that uh, you understood this and if you have any problem, you can contact me. Inshallah, we'll do it. We have two exercises of 13 chapter and one exercise of 14. And hopefully, inshallah, within two or three lectures, we can complete it. Okay, Allah Hafiz and Assalamu Alaikum.